morning. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've been here now for a whole entire month. And I feel like it was just yesterday when we were packing all of our stuff and moving over here. So it's a bit surreal to say that we've been here for a whole entire month. Given it does feel like vacation just because we've been living out of Airbnbs. So I haven't gotten to the routine of everything yet, but I would probably safely say that in the next couple months, we'll get more routine down and it'll be it'll feel more like home. Now, as you guys are probably researching everything about moving to Portugal and how life is, you hear this number, and I see this quite often. Can you live in Portugal for $2,000 a month? And if you haven't noticed, most people that bring up this $2,000 amount is mostly retirees. So someone that has just their significant other moving to Portugal and wondering, oh, can I live off of $2,000? But as a family of five, you start to wonder, can I do the same? And I wanted to create this video for you today just to give you a realistic budget on how much it costs to live in Portugal with a larger family. Now, a few disclaimers I should mention before I kind of get into numbers is, when we lived in America, we had an au pair who helped us for a couple of years. And the first month that we moved here, we wanted to make sure that we had an extra set of hands to help us with the kids. So she came over here for the first month of us moving here. So we paid for everything on her behalf. So really it's for a family of six. So if you have a larger family than even mine with a family of six, this would be a pretty good accurate budget of how much it would cost. Also another disclaimer, like I mentioned before, I feel like we're on vacation just because we are eating out about 95% of the time. I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever stayed in Airbnb for a while, you typically don't cook as much as you normally would in your own home, just because supplies are limited, you don't have all your favorite gadgets and tools and whatnot, at least from me. So we already had this plan that we were gonna eat out the majority of the meals coming here. All right. Let's get to it. I have divided this up into different categories. So eating out, groceries, entertainment, extras, gas, lodging, car rentals, and then services. So hopefully I covered the majority of people's expenses, at least for the first few months. And then we'll kind of go into detail why my numbers are the way that they are. Eating out, just because I love food, I love cooking, I love eating, it, I just love food. Okay. So eating out for a family of six, pretty much three adults and three kids, is 923 euros. I will translate everything to dollars below, so that's a lot. But just note that we ate out pretty much 95% of the time, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So like ice creams on a hot day and all that stuff. And we went to, you know, low, mid, high range restaurants. Okay, next category, groceries. We spent 515 euros. Now, you're probably wondering, but Josie, you ate out, you know, all the time. So why do you need to buy groceries? Well, if you have kids, you know that you need snacks, you need some breakfast foods, you need something for lunch sometimes, and you need sometimes need to make dinner too. It all depends on the day, to be honest, because if your kids aren't having a good day, you don't want to drag them to a restaurant, right? Or if you're just tired of eating out, you want to have a day where you just make something really quick and then get them to bed. Because you and I both know having so many kids in a restaurant is a lot of work too. People think it's, oh, a lavish life, you know, eating out all the time with kids. It's not. It's a chore. It is definitely a chore sometimes, even for a foodie like myself. Well, having to make sure that you find a restaurant that the kids like the food too can be a pain, especially mine who are picky eaters. And let's be realistic. There are places that serve chicken nuggets and french fries, but you don't wanna be feeding your kids chicken nuggets and french fries at every meal. Sometimes it's just easier making food at home that you know that they're gonna eat instead of going out to a restaurant all the time. Entertainment. Now, I wanted to, oh, before I go into entertainment, I wanted to go over the groceries that also included toiletries. So like toilet paper, detergent, paper towels. So just put a disclaimer there. 
So the entertainment. In my previous video, we went to a few different places to go sightsee for kids, the kid-friendly activities. I'll try linking it above in case you didn't see it. And then we also went to the Algarve where we did some stuff. So like we went to Sagres, which is in the western tip point of Portugal, which was fun to see. And then we also, in Quartera, we rented beach chairs and umbrellas. So to us, it was well worth the price because one, we didn't have to buy the beach chairs and umbrellas. And two, we didn't have to lug it. So just imagine taking three kids to the beach, having to lug chairs and an umbrella. It's just not so much fun in my mind. And the sun is super hot, so you definitely need some sort of shade for younger kids. So we spent a total of 158 euros for entertainment. So again, for all the activities, I took them in the Silver Coast area, and then the Sagres and the beach chairs. The beach chairs were 12 euros a day from I think 8.30 in the morning until sunset. And that was for the second line of chairs. So there's the first line, which is closest to the ocean. The first line was 15, second line is 12. And then the third line is 10 euros a day. Ideally wanted the first line because we wanted to be close to the kids who were playing in the ocean, but most of them were rented out for the whole entire month. To us, 12 euros was well worth it for, for what you got. And it was two beach chairs that you got. And we rented out for four days while we were in Quartera. So I would highly recommend it. I'm sure when full tourism season is in full effect, it's going to be really hard to rent. But if you do manage to have an option to rent it, I would highly, highly recommend it. All right. So the next category is extras. Now the extras included clothes, shoes, toys, strollers, cell phones. We came here with only nine luggages. So you can already see that we are already limited in what we could bring and I wanted to be able to purchase whatever we needed here that we couldn't fit into design luggages. So we did find that we needed some extra clothes like my son, we really limited his wardrobe. I mean he's a boy anyway so he already has a very limited wardrobe but we wanted to buy him some more clothes. So we went to some stores here and luckily they were having massive sales. I think Portugal, maybe all of Europe does this where they have promotions certain seasons. We got him some clothes as well as my husband. And then the toys. We got rid of like 99% of the toys and they got only a backpack full of toys. Each kid had a backpack full of toys. So I had told my children that once we move here, they would then be able to purchase some stuff and we would try to replenish what we kind of got rid of. And I will go over this in another video, but definitely bring as many toys as you can over here. And I'll explain why in the next video. We had to get a stroller. So my, my daughter's three. She's at the age where she's not really in a stroller anymore, but she's in a stroller. So it's like that weird transitional phase. Being here, we walked around so, so much, like way more than we ever have in the States. So we decided not to bring a stroller initially just because we wanted to see how well she did. Very shortly after a couple weeks, we decided that we needed a stroller. Um, she was great walking for probably like a good 15-20 minutes, but you can see that she was getting tired, getting restless, so we needed to get a stroller, and we're so happy that we did for those long trips. So we did buy a stroller, and then we also got a cell phone. So you're probably wondering, what did you guys do for a cell phone, right? I know. When we arrived, we ended up doing a prepaid card with Vodafone. I had already ported my number to Google Voice, and then when we arrived, I literally had no cell phone. I can't live without my phone. So when we arrived, I'm like, okay, that's the first thing I need to get is my cell phone. So we went to Vodafone and there was a prepaid one month card that gave you five gigs of data and then 500 talk and text minutes. And that was 20 euros, which is super, super affordable in my opinion. If you come from the States, you know how expensive cell phone plans are. I will recommend though that you buy the same plan that I just bought online because they give you 10 gigs of data for the same price since it's been over a month we did sign up with a plan with vodafone all right the next category is gas as you guys know and as you guys have read gas is super super expensive back in the states my husband drove a dodge durango 
and I had an electric car. We ended up probably spending maybe a hundred and fifty dollars a month in gas. That was like pre-COVID. During COVID, it, it dropped down to like maybe seventy dollars a month in gas. So like half the price because we weren't driving, right? Here, it's expensive. We end up spending $287 in gas. And given it's not like we were driving around daily because we were living in Airbnbs. It's expensive. Given we did drive to Algarve, we came back and lodging. My lodging expense is $3,797. Okay, before you exit out of this video, let me give you some disclaimers because this is not a realistic expense for lodging. And let me explain. All right lodging we like i told you have been living in airbnbs and we wanted one main airbnb to be our central hub i guess i should say i don't know like our main one where we could store all all of our luggage while we travel around portugal so at any given time we would have two airbnbs rented so like one in our main city of Caldish, and then another one wherever we we're exploring plus it was peak tourism season so all airbnbs prices are astronomical right now if you were to only use my one location as the main airbnb price we were, we, I think we paid 1200 euros. So realistically, this budget is far more than what a normal month would be. Plus, I only chose Airbnbs either in the city or within walking distance to the city, as in like a two, three minute walk. Because I still don't drive here in Europe. I'm American, I'm used to straight, big roads, and it's still daunting driving in this area. Plus, I only drive automatic cars and really it's super hard to find automatic cars here so i haven't been driving so i wanted to be able to have access to amenities and not have to rely on my husband who's still working to drive me around to basic needs you know like restaurants or grocery stores and stuff i wanted to be able to walk around all right car rental now we rent the car for pretty much um the whole entire month i mean i think there was like a week where we didn't rent the car but for the most part we had a car that we rented and the price for that is 1344 dollars again this is peak tourism season so i don't think it's going to be this expensive to rent a car during off seasons if you move at the end of june or july time or august you're going to be paying a crazy ridiculous price for the same thing services now my husband and i we both got massages we got a 90 minute massage each and i got my nails done so a manicure and a pedicure which by the way you will be so surprised how affordable services are so the massage for the 90 minutes get this it was 40 euros so 40 euros each so i spent 80 euros together for our massages and then to get my nails done. So a manicure and a pedicure was 22 euros. And I will say it was one of the best manicures and pedicures I've had in a while. So my grand total, if you have not been calculating all this with me, is a grand total of 7,624 euros or equivalent to roughly 8,981 US dollars. Again, you're probably thinking, Okay, Josie, that is a crazy budget. I don't even think it's realistic and it's not. Again, I have so many disclaimers why this budget was just so much more than, or it should be. So I wouldn't get too worried about this amount just because like I said, we ate out 95% of the time. We had two Airbnbs, we had a car rental, we had, you know, money for entertainment and all that stuff. I am positive that the next month, my budget will probably be around 3,000, 4,000 euros. But I am hoping to track all this for you guys to show you what my next month is going to be and hopefully you'll get a better sense as the time goes on but i just wanted to create this video for you to kind of give you a realistic budget and how much your first month is going to be when you don't have a long-term rental when you have kids when you want to sightsee because let's just be realistic you came to portugal because you love the country and you want to be able to explore so i'm hoping that this video was very enlightening to you guys i hope 
that it helps with your budget planning and your move to Portugal. And if you do, I would love, love, love if you gave this a thumbs up and subscribe. Like I said, my goal is to help families with their move to Portugal and I really hope that this really helped you guys. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you the next time. Thanks, bye.